shout a huge hallelujah God's people shout a believing hallelujah shout one more time a believing hallelujah say with me say I'm blessed I say I'm blessed I'm fulfilled I'm advancing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I have joy on the inside of me we're going to pray together from Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 in let's go ahead let's go to pray together from Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 16 and 17 I'll read from verse 15 the Bible says of whom and listen to me this is um, the Pauline prayers and then um, we'll talk more about this next month as we teach on the believer's authority and Paul prayed specific prayers you know it's one thing to go into the Bible and see a verse and say from this verse let's pray this but it's another thing when you take a prayer that was a prayer point in the Bible lift it directly and pray it they are called Pauline prayers that's the way it's defined theologically they're called Pauline prayers so the Bible says in verse 15, of whom the whole family, let's read from verse 40 for context, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love the way he says it, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That means our spiritual family has components in heaven and has components what? On earth. He says, what is a prayer? That, this is a prayer point. He will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit spirit in the inner man what a prayer another translation says you'll be invigorated with strength hallelujah that all the weakness will be eliminated you'll be invigorated with strength all the depression will be eliminated you'll be invigorated with strength hallelujah we're going to pray that prayer everybody say with me say heavenly father this is my prayer today that you will grant unto me according to your riches of grace that i will be strengthened with might by my spirit in the inner man. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Liman toka prateke skodre ketele rebe kura masanta haya. Father, we're praying in the name of the Lord Jesus that will be strengthened with might. Leko pene sunske bregedina brando kate skodre kaka kapa brende kore brando kane brando kuni manta brande kaska. We'll be strengthened with might in the spina man. Lebene kura bache pota. Let me the Kora Matara Matara Bashando Kabrake, Le Bronte Keregadoske Prakadaha, Rabba Baba Nekora Bashabra Talaba, or the strength of what might in our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, if you really want to help people, pray this prayer for them. Pray this prayer for them. Go to the scriptures, pray the prayer. Mention their names. If you lead that, pray this over your people that you lead. Hallelujah. Oh wow, praise God. Hallelujah. Job chapter 29. This is the second prayer point. Job chapter 29. Oh wow. The Bible says this in verse 1. Moreover, Job continued this parable and said, All that I wear as in the months past, Job was reflecting on the spot for my life. He says, In the days when God preserved me, I Job said, God preserved me. He, he says, God pres God kept me. It's a prayer we're going to pray. This is the prayer. What is going on in my life? Father, preserve it. Lord, preserve my children. Lord, preserve your, my marriage. Lord, preserve. He said, God preserve me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go, let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we're thankful for what you've done. Father, we're thankful for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I pray for you today? Job said, God preserve me. The Lord preserves your marriage. Amen. The Lord preserves your life. Amen. Your kidney will not go bad. Amen. Your heart will not go bad. Amen. Nothing will go wrong with your blood. Amen. The Lord will preserve your finances. Amen. He will preserve your job. Amen. 
He will preserve your relationship. Amen. He will preserve your family members. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The last part, the, the next part says this, verse 3. And this is very powerful. He says, verse 3 says, the second verse says, when the Lord preserve me. Verse 3 says, when the candle of the Lord shined upon my head. Uh, uh, he said, the candle of the Lord shined upon my head. What is the impact of this? Look at the next line. He said, the candle of the Lord shined upon my head. And by his light, I walked through darkness. That means that no matter how difficult is what, I found a way. Why? The light of God shone upon my head. What does it mean when you say God's light shines upon you? It affects your intelligence. It affects your intelligence. You, you, you begin to think superior intelligence because the light of God shines upon your head. Glory to God. I said glory to God. The light of God. It's a prayer you want to pray. It's a declaration. Father, I declare that the light of God shines upon my head. Hallelujah. It brings me distinction. It brings me superior value. It brings me superior intelligence. The light of God shines upon my head. The light of God shines upon my head. Go ahead and declare everyone. Oh, glory to God. The light of God shines upon my head. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to close the prayer with this. Just one question. Have you seen someone that has a skin hair cut? And if the camera can focus on the skin hair cut, help me focus on the skin, a real shiny skin hair cut. It was on like a very shiny skin hair cut. Let me look for the focus on it for a moment. Do you know what? When they have a very shiny skin hair cut, what do you notice? You don't see the head. You see the reflection of the light. Yes. It says when the light of God shines upon your head, we don't see you. We see the glory of God. Yes. I pray for you today. You didn't, what, stay on the head cut. Stay on the head. I, I, I love the head cut. You want to stay on it for a minute? Focus on it. Look, you see what I'm saying? Can you see the light? Can you see the light? It's the glory shining on the head. That's what I'm praying. Is it the light of God shining? This is what I'm praying for you. That everywhere you show up, what they will see is the light of God shining upon Amen. your head. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. they will see it in your office. Amen. They will see it in your family. Amen. They will see it in your community. Amen. They will see when you go for interviews. Amen. They will see it on your paper. Amen. They will see it on your marriage. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. Glory. Praise the Lord. As you see now, how me look at him and say, welcome to church today. He said, the glory of the Lord is shining upon your head. Look at your, you can neighbor's head. I'm like, wow, I see something. The glory of the Lord is shining upon your head. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. It is a good time to share the service with someone. Get on your phones. Let's share the service with someone today. I never really ask you that on Sundays. I do. I do an NLP. But it's a good time on the phone. Get the, the service is being streamed on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anyone you're on, on Misra. Share with your friends and say, join the service today. We're showing about something that will really change your life. Overcoming the pressure. It will really, really change your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, it's just amazing to see the goodness, the glory of God. Please remember, um, remember that um, we're meant to have the emotional series next Sunday. But because our facility is not fully done, we, we expect a lot more people We've postponed it and we we'll announced a new date. We we'll announced a new date in the future. We, we apologize about that. We we'll announce a, a new date in the future. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The second thing is that what's happening on July the 1st? Exactly. We will be, we will be in the UK for NLP, NLP London. We will be in the UK for NLP London at Wembley. At, at Wembley, it will be there. We will be there in the UK. You know, Wembley, we will be there at Wembley. I wanted to this join us, but a lot of you have relationships in the UK that you can also invite. So what I'm asking is that 
yeah, in the first service and last week, we had a lot of people that took cards and say, okay, I have some friends in the UK I would love to invite. So if you, want, if you have friends in the UK you want to invite for the prayer conference, will you raise up your right hands and the ushers will give you a card? And um, you can invite them without getting the cards. But the thing is, if you fill those cards, my first ebook I'm writing, I'm going to send them to you. So, you know, go ahead and do that. If you want to invite a friend of yours in the UK, you know, for NLP, you know, yeah, you can take the cards. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Just raise up your hand above your head. Ushers, would you help me give out the cards quickly? Let's make this as quick as possible so that we don't have to, you know, let me give out the cards quickly. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, you know, yeah, thank you. God, God bless you. Just help me give out the cards quickly. Amen. Amen. So go ahead and get take the cards. If you have friends in the UK, just go ahead and get the cards. Yeah, get the cards and invite them. And this beauty, you can always invite them without getting the card. But the beauty of filling the card is that my first ebook, you will be the first person to have it because I will mail you a copy. That's how you must leave your email there so that I can mail you a copy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So get the card, fill it right now, and give it back to the ushers. How are you doing today? You look good today. Praise the Lord. How are you doing today? You look good today. Amen. Ben, I sent you um, some pictures. I don't know if you saw it. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, many, many testimonies. Many, many testimonies in church. It's just wonderful. You know, just wonderful to be able to be here, see what the Lord is doing. And uh, 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 what's Osas? Let me show you a picture first. Put the picture up. Put the picture up. You know, yesterday was AMCVD. A what? AMVZA. This week I've been eventful from cocaine to AMVZA. And uh, let's see. What's the picture, Ben? You need a minute or two. Okay. So that's wonderful. So let me see if I have one announcement before they post a picture. Yeah. So NLP will be very powerful this week. I hope you get to join. And how are you? Where's your wife? Is she, is she next to you? You guys have not said hello to me in a long time. Okay. Come and give me a hug quickly. And your wife. Yeah, come. Come. Yeah. You guys were very young, single, tiny now, growing older. Yeah, come, 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 come. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. It's nice to see you. Yeah. Mm, wonderful. Oh. It's nice to see you. Praise God. Do you have the picture now? Okay. All right. So, thank you for your vote, Osasu Godaro, best actress in the drama. Osas, where are you? Wave your hands. That's Osas over there. Give her the microphone. Do you have the microphone for her already? Does she have it? Does she have the microphone? Right. Yeah. What's that? How are you? How does this feel? God bless you. Hi. Is the microphone on? Hello, hello. Yes, it's on. Okay, yes. God bless you, Pastor V. I can hear you. God bless you, Pastor V. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm quite shy right now. But I'm grateful for God's blessings. Thank God that God is not man. And I just will continue to rejoice in his blessings and thank him for, you know, you know, global recognition, I guess. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. What do you want to say to every lady out there that has a dream and nobody's supporting you and nobody believes in you? Was there a time like that in your own life? Constantly, Constantly, I feel that when I was growing up, I, didn't, I had low self-esteem, and it was my parents that pushed me. It was my support system that pushed me. Even if, you know, the outside world was saying one thing, I had God's love in my heart, and that's what pushed me forward. It's never to give up. It's to always go forward. Know that you're anointed. There's a talent, and that there's a love and a passion that he puts within you, and it's for a reason. Amen. And I'm just so grateful. And Praise I'll just God. continue to give praise first and last to God, always. Amen. 
Uh, you know, next to you is Erica. Erica is a good support. Is a sister, right? Yeah. Eric, give Erica the microphone. Yeah. Erica wants to run away right now. Oh, Erica, one of the strongest ladies I know. Oh. Her faith dies in one million times, then comes back alive. Hallelujah. Those times she was out of church for one year or two. When, she, when, she, when her faith comes back, she comes back alive. <laughs> what do you have to say, Erica? God is the greatest. And there's no better place to be than in the presence of God. Amen. No matter what it is that you're doing, no, no matter, matter what where it you is. are, just hold on to your faith. Read the word. Amen. And you see your life transformed every day. I am so blessed to be a member of this beautiful family, of this household. And my life has been a testimony year Amen. after year. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, have a Yeah. Erica has been, has been in this church for over 10 years, actually. So <laughs> she's a concrete. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, it's just good when you, when you see testimonies like this in secular place, just like when I went to see Hilda when she was doing her cooking, you know, I mean, I'm like, oh, pastor, I want to see Hilda, she comes to church. And, you know, and I slipped into the, I slipped into the cubicle and she said to me, she was exhausted, tired, and she said, when I came to church, I prayed for this. And for me, there's a lot of news about how God does not seem faithful. I want to be known for the news of how God is faithful. And that's why we share all this testimony. And we have a testimony you're keeping to yourself. That's not the right thing to do. Find a way and share it. First Samuel chapter 30. So we continue our teaching on overcoming depression. We continue our teaching on overcoming depression. We continue our teaching on overcoming depression. That's what we continue on today. In our teaching on overcoming depression. <clears throat> And the song says, why do you focus on this? Because for some people, it's not a, an issue at all. Like, <laughs> what is depression? Like, you know, some years ago, if there was a message on depression, I will not watch it. Because I felt as if that was not someone like a man, like a man like me, a man of the word. <laughs> you know, someone that teaches faith. I do, you know, can a man of faith be depressed? But surprisingly, over and over again, I've found people I really respect struggle depression. I've had my own struggle. And some people even went through a depression and never really knew that's what they went through. And when you look at the, when you look at the Bible, you look at stories like Cain. What happened to Cain? Cain just fell into a depression and did the wrong thing because his own sacrifice was not accepted and his brother's sacrifice was accepted. And the devil got hold of Cain. The reason why I don't want to sink into depression is this. I'm hoping that like Cain, the devil will not get hold of you. Because the devil got hold of Cain because of depression. I said in the first service, I said, the goal is not the depression. The tool of the devil is to put the poison in you so that it can ruin the future. Look at Cain. Cain ruined everything. Just because of one moment when he was down in his emotion. He was down in his emotion. The bad thing about depression is this. In your depressive state, you can make decisions that you cannot recover from. You can. And when you think of Cain, you think of someone like Joseph. If there was someone in the, in, in the book of Genesis that had all the reasons to be depressed, I think it's Joseph. How can your blood brother sell you as a slave? And when he now sold you as a slave, for not, for not doing the wrong thing, which is like making out with your master's wife, you now became a slave prisoner. Not just a slave, you became a prisoner. I want to ask you a question. If it were you, what would they have said? You would have said, God, I'm tired of saving you. Because the first thing that I became a slave, and it's amazing because nobody had the vision that, oh my God, will you receive this? Joseph had the dream that he was a star. And the other stars bowed around him. Yes or no? Did you receive that? Yeah, you didn't catch it. Joseph had a revelation that he was a star. And all the stars bad around him. You know what? When he told his brothers, they didn't hear him. All they heard that he was a star. They didn't hear that they two were stars. They, it never occurred to them that we too, we are stars. So the reason why they are fighting his own stars is because they feel as if they are nobody. 
But Joseph said, I'm a star, and I saw other stars. He said, I saw other stars around me. But the key thing is this. How do you become a star? And the first thing that happens to you is that the first thing that happens to you, you are sold as a slave. If it were some churches, they say you have generational causes. It's your village that are doing you. But look at Joseph. If from a slave, he stood for God and he became a prisoner. But the third place, it didn't get worse. It only got better. If there's someone that should be bonafide depressed, I think the person should be who? Joseph. Because for Joseph, there was nothing he did that he caused by himself. It was what people did to him. Glory to God. So the question is this. This is a big question today. So why is it important for us to come out of depression? This, this is, the target of depression is to influence, the target of depression is to, inf, is to influence your reasoning so that you can paralyze and lose the future. That's the target of depression. And the reason I'm saying so is that because depression changes people. Change all the time. Depression changes people. You know, for the things you go through, some of those people went through it and they came out stronger. But the question is that for the things you go through, it's killing some people. I'll give you a good example. Uh, you know, I said this earlier on. I said, one of my friends from secondary school, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with him, so and his wife. And I was surprised how he had changed radically. And you know what he had changed? By the time he finished talking to me, he was not the person I used to know. He was not that person that used to be very spiritual, very aggressive with the things of God, had vision. And when he told me his story, all I could just point out to, he, was, he had become depressed. And you see people, you may not be able to tell when it happened to them, but gradually, they just lost that zest. I don't know, you know, that spark. And when you come to them and talk about the visions you guys had, they're like, no, I'm a different person. I'm not, that kind of, I'm not that kind of person that keeps pursuing vision. I'm not that kind of person that keeps having dreams. I've kind of settled. I don't know what, who knows what I'm talking about. And some of you, and what happened is that as life happens, all those things begin to happen to them. But that's why you don't want to play, stay in the place of depression. There's some of you right now, what really, what really killed everything was that you lost a huge amount of money. You had a setback in business. And, you know, maybe it's not one, maybe it's two, maybe it's three. It's really taking a toll of you. But the purpose of depression is not what happened. It's the fact that it's, a compet it's going to change you. You're going to become a different person. There are ladies and men under the sound of my voice. And you've said things like, I will never marry again. Yes or no? Talk to me. Yes or no? Yeah, why have you said that? And the reason why you said that is because you've gone through a bad patch. But this was not how you thought of your future. You didn't think of a future as a single person. You thought about having a great marriage, having a great future. What changed? Series of experience began to break your heart. There's some of you, it has to do with ministry. And the reason why you don't want to allow depression is that you need to ask yourself, is this, who I, is this, is this me or I'm becoming somebody else? And you'll just see people, you'll see them like, but this is not what we spoke about the future. This is not the kind of dream we had. You know, I was speaking with someone I'd not seen in a long time. I saw him sometime earlier on this year. I'd not seen about maybe about 19 years. And I just said, what happened to you? And he just began to catalog things that happened, lives abroad. He catalog things. I said, he said, everything changed. He said that, he said, talking to you. He said, you are reminding me of who I used to be. I said, what happened to you? He said, literally, I forgot who I used to be. And that's what happens. When you stay in a state of depression for a long time, the tendency to forget who you used to be is very high. Very high. There was a way you had passion. Many of you used to pray a lot and fast. You will fast once in a week, twice in a week. Now you don't pray again. Like, God, whatever God wants to do, let him do. I can't come and kill myself. You used to, you used to, there was a way you used to dream about business and write vision down and write goals and write faith checks. But because some things have not happened, you just drop off it. And are there opportunities to give up on your dream? Several opportunities. But you need to make up your mind. Am I going to be like a Joseph? 
Joseph had gone through so many things, but Joseph kept pursuing. I love the way Joseph summarized the whole of his life lesson in the book of Genesis chapter 50. Joseph said, he said, what's your plan for evil? The message pastor says, the same plans God took and used for God. God did not have to do something extra. He said, the same plan God took and used for God. Glory to God. So today, our teaching here will be, how do I begin to come out of depression? So someone says, how do I know? So if you're depressed, one of the things you notice that you feel frustrated, you begin to blame a lot. You begin to blame a lot. If you're not blaming yourself, you're blaming other people. If you're not blaming other people, you're blaming God. Or you begin to blame an event. You say, it's not. It's because I got married. Because I lost my job. Because I lost money. It's because of this person's appointment. You begin to blame all those things. That's what you begin to do when you get depressed. Oh, glory to God. I say glory to God. And that's weak. Glory to God. All right, all right. So how do you so first summer chapter first summer chapter thirty? Somebody say hallelujah. All right, first summer chapter thirty in verse verse three. The Bible says, and David had come back, and David the Bible says, and David and his men came to the city, and behold, the city was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Until they had no more power to weep. That's depression. The Bible says that and David and his men, not just his men, David as a person, wept. <laughs> Have you experienced this before? I've, I experienced it once or twice. When you cry, and you're crying, but there's no tears coming out again. When he wept, and there was no power to weep again. And the reason why was that, let me tell you something. I don't think that this was what got to David. I think what got to David was that it was just one thing after the other. One thing after the other. Oh, you know, and at this time, he was even living with the enemies. Just for peace of mind. And right there, they had an attack. And he was wondering, this was wondering, Lord, you anointed me as king. I should be going for throne. Why am I going for battles? How can I be anointed king and be living as a fugitive? And many of you, that's the paradox that with all my praying, why is it getting worse? With all my fasting, why is it not working out? And that's what is frustrating for you. You know, listen to me. One person that can easily get depressed is a Christian. You know why? When someone that is not close to God, something happens. You say that I'm not close to God. It's be like, ah, I'm not close to God. But for Christian, you're like, ah, with all I do for God, I can never forget. Passages, first brand new car. I can never forget. You know, Pastor Jesus, that tithing person, giving, Pastor Jesus, you know, Pastor Jesus, kind of means that tithes. 1,274,344 88 kobo. No roundup. You would, you know, like, let's, this thing must be 10%. Then he just told me that, uh, Pastor B, they stole my car. Ah! You know, our church was a smaller church, you know, that car was a Global testimony. I don't know if it was something that I didn't even have a brand new car. He was in a, this, this, this store, this store what? Ah. <laughs> Next thing, shakaboom, zagaba, shakaboom, zagaba. It's a gentleman. We didn't see the car. Do you know that that event alone is enough to destroy some people's faith? And they will say that, ah, with all I've done for God, I pastor, I serve God, I tithe, and that is it. But the question is that. Do you realize that what was meant to destroy your faith can build your faith? Because you can be like Job that says, even though he slays me, yes, will I praise him? In fact, great, great faith is built in tough times. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Okay, let's go quickly. Let's go quickly. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm trying. I want to go to ask for a comment, but I'm looking at the time. First, first Samuel chapter 30. The Bible says that, and so David went and his men came to the city and it was burnt with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters and, their, and were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5 says, and David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinamah the Jebusite and Abigail the wives of Nabal the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed. It was, it was in a state of depression. Why? 
what it became complicated the bible says this for the people even spoke of stoning him because of the soul of all the people were grieved did you see that he said the people his friends spoke about stoning him the bible says every man for his son and for his daughters but this is what they did and this is the first step if you feel depressed here maybe you're depressed because something is not growing in your life this is the first step. the bible says and david encouraged himself in the lord if you're going to come out of depression the first thing you must do is this very powerful you must accept responsibility for change and let me tell you something it's very difficult for most people going through depression most people who go through depression be like i'm helpless i can't help myself see what is happening to me no one is going to help me uh -uh. if you're going to experience change you must lift up yourself the Bible says this. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know the way to be more depressed. See, you need to ask yourself when you're depressed. Do I, oh my God. Listen, when you're depressed, I, I always say this to you, but maybe you can think about it right now. When things are happening to you, do you ask yourself things that encourage you or things that discourage you? Let me give an example of things that encourage you. Give me my microphone. Let me ask. When you start asking yourself things like, God, why are you punishing me? Do you feel encouraged or discouraged? Exactly. When you start asking yourself that, why am I the only one? Do you feel encouraged or discouraged? You need to ask yourself, when things happen to me, what do I ask myself? I want to get some feedback. What do you ask yourself? Do you ask things yourself, things that encourage you or things that discourage you? Let's be honest. Hey, give Nana the microphone. The guy with the clean hair that we use, for example. Yeah. What do you ask yourself? Not church one. What you really ask yourself? Don't give me a church answer. Yeah. It's, it's always the negative side. What do you ask yourself? Negative. Tell me what you ask yourself. Yeah. So it depends on the situation. Yeah. You want to do Just tell me what you ask yourself. So I'm expecting maybe a contract for, yeah. for something. And yeah. Like, why is it not me? Why? What does uh -huh. the other person have? Yeah. You see, the, you see the. Why is it what? Not me. Uh huh. When you when you still that question, what will happen to you? You'll feel happy or sad, right? Sir, thank you. Pass the microphone to someone else. Just give the lady behind you. What do you ask yourself? Yeah, just give it to the lady behind you. Just give it to her. Yeah. Just give it to her. Don't worry. She doesn't have to take it. Yeah. What do you ask yourself, lady? Yeah. Um, sometimes when I see my mates doing things and. So, what do you ask yourself? What am I doing with my life? Like? What are you doing with your life? And, and when you feel that, when you hear that, what do you feel? <laughs> see. What you ask yourself will determine how you feel. Who else wants to tell me something you ask yourself? You want to tell me something? Someone else. Someone else in, in the middle that wants to tell me something, maybe from this side. Want to tell me something that you ask yourself. You know, there's a lady that is smiling over there beside the man in white. Yeah. No, no, it's next row. Yeah. Yeah. What do you ask yourself? Tell me. God, am I a stone? What does that mean? I never heard that before. Please, can you explain that? What does that mean? Okay, it means am I not human? Oh. Why are you not looking at me? Am I a stone? Am I an object? Wow. 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 Great. What, what do you ask yourself? This brother over here, what do you ask yourself? This one here. Yeah, yeah, what do you ask yourself? Yeah. Why is he you? Mm -hmm. Do you notice that most of nobody has told me the good thing they ask themselves? And this is why we get the this is why we get depressed. You know why we get depressed? We get depressed because we keep asking ourselves questions that drag us into depression. We keep asking ourselves questions that what drag us to depression. Who are those that ask themselves good things? Or maybe you can tell me some good things to ask yourself. Or you can think about you can make up good things to ask. Anybody here something good to ask yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Huh? Who am I? So when something doesn't great happen, you ask yourself, like, when your car is lost, you're like, oh, who am I that you're mindful of me? <laughs> Give me an example. I just want to know if you're making it up, you know. Because there's some times where something really bad happens and you just look like, at least I'm still alive, Sha. Like, God, this could have gone ten times worse. Good. So, 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 so what are you asking yourself? That? Father, thank you because it didn't get worse. 
you see what I'm saying? So when the Bible says, and David encouraged himself, I wanted to see how he did it. How, you're going to feel down when you keep asking yourself all these very terrible native questions. The Bible says, that, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. So question, if something happens to me, what is God protecting me from? So I had a terrible breakup. What is God what protecting me from? There was a time I missed, you know, there was a time myself and Reverend Sam would travel to South Africa. This was, this is the weirdest way to miss a flight. We traveled to South Africa together to preach. Preach, finish preaching. Myself and Reverend Sam, we were in the business class lounge having a cup of tea. Normally, they will tell you when the plane is ready, they make an announcement, this flight is fine, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and that was it. So they made the announcement and said, the flight is flying. It was just one minute or two minutes walk. So we got up and went. As it went, I knew where the flight, the gate normally. So I could see the plane pulling back. I said, Rev, that's our plane. He said, no, it can't be. They just announced two minutes ago. We can't be. They would get, they, they, it can't be our plane. When we got there, all for them to say that the person announcing forgot to announce on time. And that was the plane that left. The airline admitted it was their fault because they even housed us and changed the ticket for free. They, and because, I mean, the log, the computer log is there. I was, you know, and that's why who you work with matters. I was angry. I was furious. And Reverend Sam said, uh -uh, why are you angry? What are you going back home to do? He said, God said we have worked so hard. He said we should enjoy some of this South African airline money. <laughs> Gave us an extra day vacation. He said, let's go and have some steak and enjoy ourselves. Tomorrow we'll find ourselves in Nigeria. I said, see perspective. The question is, let me tell you, your life is not that difficult. You just ask yourself a question that makes it difficult. You now ask yourself, God, are you punishing me? God, why are you punishing me? When you ask yourself, God, why are you punishing me? What will you feel? You will feel pain. The questions you ask yourself will give you the direction you will think. Thank you, my brother, for clapping. Thank you, thank you. Clap, clap some more. Thank you. So the question is this. You had a terrible breakup. God, what are you protecting me from? You lost the contract. Well, God... Is this too small? Is there a bigger thing you have in mind? Yeah. You, you see what I'm talking about? It? So I've learned over time. Oh my God. I've learned over time. I've learned over time that the questions I act will determine my focus and direction. So I have those questions. What is God protecting me from? Another thing I ask myself, what is God teaching me? I wouldn't, how, so something bad really happens. God, I wonder how you will turn this around to become a testimony. I wonder, see, so one question I ask myself, I wonder how this will sound like when it becomes a testimony. That kind of question encourages me. The reason why I'm saying this, I'm going back to this verse. When the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord, I'm giving you the practical thing to do. The question is that, so I've lost money. How do I encourage myself? And I ask myself, Lord, thank you for the loss I made. I only wonder how this will become a testimony. That gives you another perspective. That encourages me. I had a terrible breakup. And I say, Father, thank you. Because you keep removing Lot so that Abraham can get to the promised land. Very powerful. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. If you're going to deal with depression, one of the ways that God will help you is to give you perspective that will empower you. Perspective that will what? Encourage you. But the thing is this. Those perspectives don't come naturally. You have to teach yourself. You have to train yourself to have those perspectives. This is not the way I used to think before. Formerly, when I had challenges, you know, my, my first thing is that, why me? The, that was the first thing. Why me? Like, why me? But when I have challenges now, Lord, are you showing me how strong I am? Are you showing me what I can do? Because the Bible says that temptation will not come except it's at your capacity. So when I have a challenge, you're telling me what I'm... Someone says, Pastor, I need 10 million. You say, wow, you should be happy. You know why? That shows your capacity. That right now you have grown to a person of what? 10 million capacity. The challenges should reflect your capacity. Are you here, somebody? Yes, you're struggling with your marriage. How, what do you say to yourself? Wow. I wonder how this will become a good marital book for younger couples to read. 
when we find all the answers. That's it. I, I remember when I lost my parents and I became an orphan. I'm an orphan, no father, no mother. My wife has father and mother. That's so unfair. Pastor J has father and mother. That's so unfair. Sister John only has one. That's fair enough. All of you that are over 40, they have father and mother. You're so unfair. Uh, you should give us one at least. You know what I told myself? I read a scripture. It says, when you go through pain, the comfort that God comforts you, you'll be able to comfort other people. You know one of the things I said to myself, Father, thank you for this, because now I know how to comfort people that have lost people. Because I've learned something. My pain has become what? A lesson. How do you encourage yourself? You know, because the first thing you have to do to change your life, to change the state, to accept response, and say, okay, no, I, you know, if I feel depressed, then I can change it. That, that's the first thing. I can change it. And let me read something to you that's very powerful. People change when they hurt enough that they have to change. People change when they learn enough that they have to change. People change when they receive enough and they're able to change. Change will come when you have something bigger than your pain. Yeah, if you've been through depression, your change came when you have something to begin. If you see people that struggle their marriages and stay together, single people should I tell you the truth. Marry someone that has a bigger reason to marry than marriage. The reason why is this. It says the threefold cord is what? Not easily broken. In your marriage, you will need something bigger than marriage to keep it together. Ask those that are married. They will tell you that when we wanted to break up, we thought of something else. What they thought of was the fact that there's a testimony of Christ we have to keep. They thought of other things. The question is that when you just think of you and I, and that person begins to irritate you, then you can break up the marriage. What I'm saying to you is this, which is very powerful. When you have a superior thing than your pain, you will find yourself going through it. So, how do you take responsibility? There's a way you feel depressed. You need to just tell yourself that I feel this way, but I can change it. Someone say, I feel this way. I can change it. Say, I'm responsible for my thoughts, for my feelings, and my emotions. Yeah. So, if you feel down, don't say, oh, I feel down. Oh. No, no, no. Like, how am I going to change this today? How am I going to? I, I want to change this feeling of feeling down. And I begin to ask myself empowering questions. Uh, what am I feeling down? I'm feeling down because... I've lost something. How do I change it? Then I ask myself a question that changes my direction to this. The second way you encourage yourself is this. The second way you encourage yourself is by what? By sharing testimonies. Not sharing with other people, recounting what the Lord has done in your life. One of the biggest things I have in my life, you know, that I do is just to journal gratitude. To just go back and say, Lord, I'm thankful for this. Um, I, you, know, you know, many of you don't know how to thank God. You just say, I'm thankful for my breakthrough. I don't thank God that way. I, I look back in details and I look at each step of the way and say, Lord, I'm very grateful for this. The reason why is that gratitude creates an atmosphere for God to move. And gratitude comes along with peace and peace is a weapon. I mean, they only head on this side. <laughs> I, I said, you don't understand that peace is what? A weapon. In fact, if the devil wants to fight you first, the first thing he goes for is your peace. Your peace and joy is what it is. Let me show you something. Turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah. Let's look at that quickly. Hallelujah. Peace is a weapon. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 23 verse 6. 26 verse 3 rather. We'll come back to this quickly. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 26. Verse 3. See what the Bible says. The Bible says that, And the Lord will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, because it trusted in him. So peace is a function of trust. And you cannot be depressed and have peace at the same time. So it's your choice. See, see what God says. God says, If you choose to be in peace, I will keep you. So, it's your job to make sure that you choose to stay in a place of peace. 
He said the Lord will keep him in perfect peace. Whose heart has stayed on him. And guess what? How is that? Because he trusted in him. Peace is a function of you trusting in God. It says this in, verse, in the next verse. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the, for in the Lord Jehovah is what everlasting strength. Glory to God. So how do you change everything? So the first thing is this. You need to change. You need to take responsibility. So how do you feel? Take responsibility for it. Don't just be like, I feel down. Okay, you feel down. Do you want to change it? And that's where it starts from. And how do you want to change it? You need to think of something bigger than you. You know, Osas was sharing with us how she won the award. But if I give her the microphone right now, there's one million times what things that happened in Hollywood. I said, I'm never going back there again. But the only reason why she got that award was because she went back there. Everybody, everybody that you celebrate. I keep thinking of Joseph. How did Joseph stay stable? His brother lied on him. They sold him. His master's wife lied on him. He took responsibility. Do you notice something? If Joseph was in prison, going like a victim, like they lied on me, that's why I'm in prison right now. Would he have noticed the butler that was angry and sad? No. The reason why he noticed they were unhappy is because he was happy and full of joy. He was paying attention to them. Oh, wow. Take responsibility. You know, a lot of you are waiting for that to, to make you happy. You will wait forever. Take responsibility for your joy. Take responsibility for your joy. In your marriage, be the person that brings the fun. In your marriage, be the person that brings the fun. Be the person. Don't be the person that's trying to make happy. Women, amen. Because sometimes for my interaction with ladies, most ladies think that it's someone's responsibility to make them happy. In your office, be the fun of the office. In, in, your, in your ministry team, be the fun. From time to time, just go, hey, what happened? I got joy, 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 joy. Ah, so then, are you okay? Yes. Why? I bring the fun to the party. Glory to God. You come to a church, no matter the bridge, you're sitting like, once the man you say, hey, what happened? You say, joy, just joy, just joy, just joy. Just joy. Just joy. I'm responsible for so I say, huh? but the church is cold today. Then bring the heat. Bring the heat. Bible says you are the joy, you are the light of the world. And what? A city set on the hill that cannot be hid. So bring the joy, bring the heat. Keep co- stop complaining of huh? why, why, why did, no no bring the heat. Hey, I got joy. Hey, I got joy. Hey, I got joy. You don't like it? Hey, I got joy. Oh, no, I'm always down. Yeah, the same way you're always down, be always up. Bring the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I, I, amen? So the first thing to change, to, to recover from the bed, you have to take responsibility. How do you take responsibility? Take responsibility of what you think and what you say by asking the right questions. Take responsibility for what you think. And because I was thinking, how did David encourage himself in the Lord? I could imagine that he had to think something that will bring encouragement. How do you think something that brings encouragement? Ask yourself the right question. What is, God present, present, what is God protecting me from? So you just, this relationship that broke up three years after, what is God protecting me from? This deal that did not go through, what did God protect me from? This thing that made me cry, what is God teaching me? Glory to God. You must have these questions. Let me tell you something. You must have, I call them go-to questions. I, I tell them, how is this expanding my capacity? Oh, wow. Look at that for the question. You know, you, you've lost 10 million. I say, how is this expanding my capacity? Because with that, you know, you got fired. How is this expanding my capacity? You have a management issue, a leadership issue. How is this expanding my capacity? Did you, oh my God. <laughs> How do you know that David asked another question? I knew because of 1 Kings, 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Bible says when Goliath showed up and his brother said, David, shut up and go home. David said, is there no a curse? What did David say? David asked a question. He said, is there not a reason I'm here at this time to hear this kind of thing that Goliath is saying? 
He said, it's not coincidence I'm here. I'm here because I have something to do about it. He didn't say, he didn't say, wow, it's time to run away. He gave himself a question that gave him the right thing. Question, what do you keep telling yourself? Why? You change your, you, you know, the first step is to change, take responsibility. Second step is what? You change your focus. You change what? Your focus. Depressed people are focused on what is wrong. That's a consistent pattern of depressed people. Do I, have to, do I still have some time? The press people are focused on what is. Who here is very depressed? You're very, very depressed. Anybody? Just raise up your hand. I want to help you. Nobody in our church. That's fantastic. I'm doing a great job. Okay, there's a lady over there. Okay, there's a, give her the microphone. Why are you depressed? The lady in green, yeah. So why, why are you depressed? Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know where to start from. Okay. I've been battling with so many things in my life. This is my first time in this church. I was invited by a friend. It's just like the message is for me because for like so many years, things have been going wrong. Like what? I can't say it. Tell me the one you can't say. You don't have to explain. Just tell me the titles. Like my marriage, my children, my job, things no, like that. I'm not married. Okay, so tell me. Um, all my siblings are married. Yeah. I'm You're the only one that is not married. I'm 37. Okay. My business is not going well. Your business is not going well. I've, I used to be so spiritual before. And all of a sudden, everything stopped. Yeah, the depression took away. And this, this is why I'm teaching this. Because people will be so spiritual. And the depression would steal their spirituality away. Yeah. So, you're not married. Your business not, what else is not going well? My health. Your health. You're struggling with your health. I can't sleep. What? I can't sleep. You can't sleep. Why can't you sleep? I can't see. You, can, you can't see. I can't see. Oh, you can't see. Okay, no, no, oh, no, no. Okay, you can't say what's wrong with your health. Okay, I get it. Okay. So those three things. Yes. What is going well in your life? Nothing or something? My family. Okay. What about your family? They are all good. What? They are all good. Okay, what does that mean? Like, they are all in good place. So that is going well in my life. What else? That's all. Okay. I want to show you something. What's your name, please? What's your name? Dami. 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 What? Dami. Dami. Good. You said all that is going well is your family. I want to show you something. When I asked you what is not going well, you were able to list about three things, and if I allowed you, you keep going. And I asked you what is going well, like you said, your family. And I was trying to ask you to expand on what's going on in your family, and you kept on summarizing it. And the reason why you do that subconsciously, it doesn't mean you do consciously, is because over time you've trained your mind to focus on what is not going well. So I want to ask you a question. Do you have friends that really love you? Yes. That's going well for you. You forgot that, right? Yeah. Are you, are you in financial debt right now? You're in debt, okay? So you have friends that really take care of you, right? Do you have any legal problems? Are the police looking for you to arrest you? No. no. Wow. Do you know who that police are looking for? You know anybody like that? Have you got any XMS? Is that this and this? Running away from a kidnapper? Have you saw this? <laughs> oh, why are you smiling right now? Why are you smiling? Tell me why you are smiling. You were not smiling before. You were almost crying before. Just, you are almost crying before. Why are you smiling right now? Because that is not happening in my life. The reason why, that's not why you're smiling. You're smiling because for the first time, you're thinking about all the great things that are happening in your life. You know, sometimes, everything will change. But sometimes, what you need is to change your perspective. And just say, I've been looking at all the bad things. I'm going to move and look at all the good things. 
Let me ask you some, something. Is there someone that likes you or is there someone that is talking to you? When does the guy say, hey, hi, just I like you? No. Yeah. One last. Even if you didn't like the person, it doesn't make a difference. Or it didn't last. One last. Or maybe there's someone right now saying hi to you. No. Yeah. What are you answering? Sorry. I asked you three questions. I said, when last did someone say, hey, hi, can I get your number? Or like, you know, or someone says, hey, uh, baby, I, how are I you? I have male friends. No, I yeah, but when last did any of them say, hello, hi, you know, I like you, something like that, yeah. Or can I get your number? You don't, you don't, you don't can I get your number? Something like, oh, you, you can, oh they, can I get your number? Like yeah. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. When, when last? This year? Last year? Uh, this year. This Gen year? January. January. So you're attractive. <laughs> oh, you don't know you're attractive because do they get numbers over that are not attractive? At least they're looking for sex. You have something they're looking for at least. That's something that say, get my number, oh, get my number, oh. <laughs> See, wh wh why are you shaking your head? Why are you doing this? Like, that's not happening. I, they ask for my numbers. I give my numbers. You give I your have, number. I have friends, yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is this. I'm not denying that you have family, health, and all of those challenges. But I'm only saying to you that if you change your focus, it will change your life. That's what I'm saying to you today. How do you feel right now? Better. You feel better than the way you came? You, you're even laughing right now. Yes. I, the moment I came in, I came in the first service, and um, there was a period, there was a time I was sharing tears when the choir was ministering, and um, it's like the song was speaking to me directly, and when the um, counseling or something, when the lady was talking and tears were just dropping, it was like, these people are really talking to me. And how do you feel right now? I feel better. Just focus, like Joseph, on what God is doing in your life. Ask yourself a question that everybody is married except me. Is it because God wants to have the biggest testimony in the, in the family? Because all the people are married at 25, 28, 30, normal. But then you get married, you're like, ah! David Larry that will be waiting for this year. The Ashwe B and Gile will be decide. So start asking yourself questions that will encourage you. Let's stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and I, this one I want to do for the next one minute. Just think back and thank him for things he's done for you. Thank him for things he's done for you. I know they've gone through challenges in your business, in your marriage, but why not let's focus on what he's done for you right now. Let's go ahead and thank him for that. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. And great Father in Jesus' name, once again, we thank you. And we'll receive your word today. And I'm praying that you'll help us to take responsibility for how we feel. Ask ourselves questions that will strengthen us in a mighty way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.